peace and freedom, and grace be with you. Um, welcome to another wonderful episode of Hard Fire, our Libertarian Public Affairs show. I am pleased to introduce to you today a candidate or a former candidate for office who was one of my brethren running with me uh, in New York State this year. Uh, he was running for controller, I was running for governor. And now we're just going to unwind and talk about him mostly, about how he's um, doing things and has done things in Rockland County. My guest is John Kane, who is the was the LPNY candidate for governor for excuse me for controller in 2006. Uh, he's also a former office holder, and I'm going to let him explain things in a moment in terms of his background and um, many things he's done uh, in his part of New York. Uh, and I just want to take time to thank him and other uh, candidates, Jeff Russell. Uh, Don Silberger and others who ran for the Libertarian line on a statewide level uh, this year in these elections. Um, John, um, can you tell me a little about yourself or t to our audience about yourself and, um, and your background, where you've come from, where you're going? Well, I'm a, I'm a Queens boy by, by birth. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, I originally, uh, when I got out of college, I was a uh, high school science teacher. And uh, I had a chance to go into uh, the insurance business. I became a licensed insurance broker. Mm -hmm. um, after doing that for about 20 years, uh, I got out of got out of that. <laughs> and um, right now, I'm I'm uh, self-employed basically as a uh, insurance marketer. I do insurance marketing for insurance wholesaler, okay. and I do insurance uh, instruction for a local uh, insurance school. Excellent. Um, politically. Mm -hmm. um, I was always interested in politics as a kid. I remember mm -hmm. t 10, 12 years old on election day going up to the polls and just watching what was going on and, right. and uh, you know, watching election returns when I was 12 years old, fascinated mm -hmm. with it. Um, and I originally uh, started out as a Democrat and, mm -hmm. and uh, got disenchanted with that. But over the uh, uh, course of the years, um, I was appointed to uh, the Rockland County Workers' Compensation uh, Self-Insurance Committee. Then I was appointed to the uh, Town of Clarkstown uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. Right. And then probably the crowning moment, uh, one way or the other, was I was appointed to the uh, Planning Board in the Town of Clarkstown. Right. Um, that's kind of like a uh, backdoor way to get involved and be an official in New York politics. Um, our party and our movement people often think in terms of straightforward elections, but you can be appointed to planning boards and water commissions and, and other uh, such things, um, particularly if you've already established yourself as someone you know, uh, in the community who uh, is capable in those areas. Uh, and um, and um, do you, have you done a straightforward e election um, activity uh, apart from um, what you've done for libertarians? Uh, yeah, back in 1985, mm -hmm. I was a candidate for uh, Rockland County Legislature. All right. And it was a, um, a town-wide race. Um, seven candidates, top three, get elected. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was number four. <laughs> so that was, that was the extent of my uh, mm -hmm. political experience before this year. All right. Well, um, this year, uh, we want to talk about that first a little bit because that's the most recent. Uh, you ran for state controller, Correct. and um, that was um, it's quite an interesting position in terms of what you actually do, um, in terms of getting into the nuts and bolts of the New York State's finances. Uh, and it turned out to be a sleeper race that erupted. Uh, can you give me some reflections about that? Yeah, it, that? it 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 was probably uh, the, it's always usually the dullest race because it's not a. a, a uh, let's see, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not a policy-making decision. It's strictly mm -hmm. uh, auditing, uh, uh, you know, local school districts, local municipalities, and overlooking the state pension fund. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no Republican, Democrat, or even Libertarian way of doing it. So it's yeah. generally an overlooked uh, race. Mm -hmm. um, and then, probably midway through it, I don't know if it uh, was Callahan himself, uh, Mr. Hevesy's Republican opponent, or someone independently uncovered. You know the the fact that uh, Alan Hevesy was using uh, state state employees to show for basically his wife around, mm -hmm. um, and that that brought it out to the front and made it a major race. Yeah. And about that time, that's when I started to get phone calls from people. <laughs> <laughs> I think they read your backstory versus the current story with Hevesy. Yeah, that, that came up too. And I, we'll talk about that mm -hmm. a little bit later. But uh, yeah, it, it, it made the race that was dull uh, exciting, and also in a year where. 
it turns out Mr. Spitzer won hands uh, uh, several, whatever it is, 30, 40, 50 points, whatever it was. Um, I think the media was bored uh, with the whole oh, yeah, election yeah, was, uh, this yeah. year in New York. And then something sparked some interest uh, in, in what was otherwise a very predictable race and, and actually made comp controller race uh, competitive uh, in many people's eyes. Uh, do you um, want to just encapsulate what your campaign was about for a controller? In, in the midst of all this, well, it was it was to be very honest, it was very low key. Uh -huh. um, you know, basically, I um, uh, at the beginning I made a pledge to get uh, 250 signatures or pay 250 dollars. I ended up paying 250 dollars. Mm -hmm. um, signatures are not as easy to get as as you think. Mm -hmm. um, and and then basically I, I made myself available to the media, but I, I didn't really seek them out, and they started seeking me out at, at appropriate mm -hmm. times. Um, yeah. You know, I, like I was uh, mentioning before, we went on the air. I got interviewed by a radio station in Cortland, New York, uh, uh, the Cortland north of Binghamton there, a uh, couple of newspapers, mm -hmm. and, and then locally in Rockland County where I live, finally the, the local Rockland Gannett paper picked up on it, and uh, then it started to take off. Mm -hmm. um, they published my response to the editorial endorsement. Uh, I sent out, uh, I actually early on, um, I should have brought it because it, it, it was my stump speech wherever I went someplace was uh, I sent out a uh, basically a community view letter, eight mm -hmm. simple reasons for voting libertarian, you know, right. uh, take off on a TV show. Uh, I couldn't get anybody to publish it, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, but finally towards the end, uh, although no one exactly published that, I, I, I did get some interviews. I got a nice, yeah. nice story in the Rockland Journal News. Right. Um, and, and I think one of the things I did was at least people who know me, um, they 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 got to see that libertarians aren't frightening people. Right. You know, uh, I think some people are afraid of us. You know, there's a. Uh, you don't look like you're a rebel of the yeah, 60s you know, it's, or the yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> or it's, a child uh, of Woodstock or. You know, well, well, maybe I was, but okay. it's a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I, I think that that's it was very important that that the face of the party and the face of the movement um, reflects the everyman. You know, as as much as it does uh, the firebrand. You know. Um, but, you know, a lot of people ha who get involved in so-called third-party um, non-mainstream movements uh, are pictured that way because they have to be idiosyncratic, it's felt, mm -hmm. in order to indulge in themselves in something other than brand A and brand B. Uh, so you present to them the, uh, the other face, the face that says, yes, we're regular people, too. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, one of the things that I would recommend to a lot of people uh, pro-liberty activists is that they become members of their community boards or uh, business councils uh, where they can uh, so that when they do speak up after a while people will not look at them as oh here's that activist coming in here oh they'll look at you as oh there's Barney you know he's been here for six months and um, you know he's a pretty good guy or, or a good woman you know whoever it is uh, yeah and that, and that would be the way to um, introduce the the view as a social matter to the body politic at the local level. Um, well, I didn't ask you though what you felt, going back to Mr. Hevesy, what you felt about Mr. Hevesy's uh, activity in terms of, uh, let's say, misappropriating government resources or public resources to support well, himself or I, his family. I have mixed feelings on it. Uh, number one, we all know that's not the worst thing anyone's done in public office. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the worst thing anyone do, did in public office was, was uh, uh, you know, use a public employee in the wrong manner to the tune of maybe a hundred, hundred fifty thousand okay. dollars. Um, that's really not in in its own case so mm -hmm. terrible. Uh, what bothered me about it was the way he went about defending it. Um, you know, uh, you know, to bring up his wife's illnesses mm -hmm. and, and play up that he felt threatened uh, and he needed a chauffeur for his wife because someone sent him a dead bird. Um, it's scandal management 101. You, you, if, you're, if you've done something or been accused of doing something, you convert it into I'm a victim, you know, or exactly. my family's a victim. Exactly. You know, you know it's, it's the classic thing I always tell, I tell my kids about Richard Nixon. You know, mm -hmm. if he just said, yeah, we did it, you know, uh, uh, we shouldn't have done it. We'll be careful. You know, we're sorry we raided this place, this Watergate apartment. You know, it'll, it won't happen again. So what? He would have carried maybe 47 states mm -hmm. instead of 49, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> But I mean, a few people know about that. That when Watergate, that was, they were caught 
um, when he went in for the second time. They'd actually <laughs> burglarized it before, and when he tried to go in for more yeah. Democratic stuff, <laughs> that's when they got caught. Yeah, you own up to it, uh, you know, same thing with Clinton. If they started asking him questions about his sex life, he would have just stood up there and said, you know, it's none mm -hmm. of your damn business, my sex life. Mm -hmm. He would have never got impeached. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in terms of his use of the same thing, you know, there was the famous Troopergate scandal where he um, used state troopers to help him get get his mistresses to and from the governor's mansion. Um, and even there, that actually would be considered a little bit more scandalous mm -hmm. in terms of the pure substance of it than uh, what happened to, to Hevesy or, or what happened as a result of what Hevesy was doing. Uh, did that, you think that inflated um, Mr. Callahan's chances beyond what they deserve to be? Yeah, I think he, he uh, was, I, no more qualified than really I was to be controller of New York State, let's be frank about it. Um, he he uh, managed an office of 12, uh -huh. all right? And as I was telling one of the reporters in, interviewed me, I said, you know, when I had my own business, I managed an office of eight. Mm -hmm. So I'm just as qualified as he is. Um, and I managed their pension funds and, and handled the yeah. money and did the payroll. Um, not much different than Mr. Callahan did. Right. So I think it definitely inflated his... Um, I, I, in fact, I think um, at the very beginning, uh, the Rockland County executive, mm -hmm. uh, a guy by the name of Scott Vanderhoff, who ultimately ended up running for lieutenant governor, mm -hmm. was considering running for controller. I think had he run for controller, he might have beaten Hevesy mm -hmm. because he certainly was really yeah. qualified to be controller in New York. Like right? another missed opportunity by, let's say, the other party, um, yeah. which never misses an opportunity to miss an opportunity. An opportunity yeah. I, I want to break here to, to talk about... Uh, our um, reason, the etra, you know, our uh, reason for being in terms of the Libertarian Party, those who want to be involved in the party uh, on a level of uh, New York State or at the local level uh, are heartily invited to take a look at our information on our um, local and state websites. Uh, the Manhattan Libertarian Party is uh, at manhattanlp.org, and you can see that that. That web, when you see that website, you'll see a lot of information about upcoming meetings, um, activities of the party, and uh, in in New York um, City, and um, sample articles from Surf City, uh, which is a wonderful little uh, New York Press-like publication that is circulated around um, Manhattan and parts of Queens. Uh, you can also uh, go to um, lpqc.org to find out about the Libertarian Party of Queens County, where I hail from. Uh, and you can also, um, if you're interested in activity on the state level, uh, go to ny.lp.org to find out what Libertarian Party of New York is up to uh, in this post-election period. Uh, we hope that you indulge yourself in finding more about more about um, what's going on with the party and with the liberty movement in general and help, as I've tried to do in my campaign just past, uh, bring freedom back to New York. Um, I want to go back to... Mr. Kane now um, and talk about uh, the contrast between the taint of uh, Mr. Hevesy campaign, uh, regardless of what people think about the quality of that scandal, um, and your record and, and past uh, relating to ethical questions. Uh, I think one of the reasons you got a blip of publicity um, is because they looked at the Hevesy story and they looked at the other candidates and they said, oh, we have him involved with a Texas scandal, and here's John Cain, a man who uh, didn't take a bribe uh, in your past. Um, could you talk about that episode in your past? Yeah, sure. Um, it goes back to uh, 1999. Uh, I was a member of the Clarkstown Planning Board, mm -hmm. and I guess I was a little naive, um, even though by that point I had been on the board eight years. Um, I had developed kind of a reputation, and I had heard this, um, uh, reputation for being kind of a uh, someone who brought two sides together. You know, you'd have situations very often where a developer would come in and he'd want to build 40 homes in the town only wanted him to have 25. And, you know, it would go back and forth, back and forth, as government does for, for, for months. And I would step in and say, look, guys, how about 33, 34? You know, mm -hmm. uh, how about the town give up on this? How about the builder you give up on this? Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, you know, I, w I could very often swing the board around when I, I did that. Um, 
And this particular development, nobody was arguing on this, the amount of the homes. Everybody kind of agreed there would be 77 homes. Yeah. Um, but this particular was one of the last farms in Rockland County, and it went through two, two school districts. Okay. Um, one of them very highly rated, uh, mm -hmm. the highest rated and the highest scores and everything in the county, and the other one had the lowest scores and everything in the county. <laughs> um, and uh, the developer wanted to put all 77 houses in the town of, uh, in the Clarkstown School District, mm -hmm. um, and none in the other school district. Um, and he, he was using it, uh, he said he would donate all this land for Parkland, the whole bit. Mm -hmm. Well, the schools in Clarkstown couldn't handle the 77 uh, new houses. They'd okay. have to build a new school. Um, the way the map was drawn, uh, where the line went, it should have been 50, 57, 20. 57 mm -hmm. in the Clarkstown School District, 20 in the other. Uh, and that's what the town wanted. It was going back and forth, back and forth. So um, I got an invitation to go to lunch from the Rockland County Democratic Chairman. At that point, I had just left the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, would you meet with this developer? You know, um, you know, see if you can work something out. So, you know, being naive as I was, I said, sure. Mm -hmm. And I had actually come with plans to divide it, 66, 11, you know, a nice compromise. Let's get it yeah. out of here. Let's move on to other things. Mm -hmm. I sat down at a meeting at a table very similar to this. The gentleman sits down, and the first thing he says to me is, I want to give you $5,000. And I just, it was like <laughs> someone hit me in the head with a bag of nickels. Mm -hmm. I just remember saying to him, no, 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 no. And I, I, I got him off for that, and I showed him what I wanted to do. And then he said, what was probably his fatal mistake as I left, he said, don't worry, when it's all over, we'll take care of you. Mm -hmm. And I'm driving home from that meeting, and I'm thinking, that's an open-ended bribe. Um, you yeah. know, and, and not being a lawyer, I was like, is mm -hmm. it illegal not to report a bribe? Mm -hmm. So I got on my, my cell phone, and I called the person I thought would be the most likely person to ask, a county court judge in Rockland County right. by the name of Bill Nelson. And I got his judge chambers. He knows me. I said, you know, Bill, this is what happened. What do I do? He says, wherever you are, turn your car around and go um, speak to Mr. Bongiorno, who's the district attorney in Rockland mm -hmm. County. So I turn my car around. I go to the DA's office. And I figure I'm just going to make a complaint. You know, right. someone, I just wanted to go in and put it on the record. Mm -hmm. Someone tried to bribe me. I told that to the young lady at the counter. She said, could you wait here a minute? Mm -hmm. Well, I waited there a minute. Five minutes later, I'm sitting in a room, and they're putting a wire on me. Um, and, and call him back. Call him back. Tell him you decided to take the money. And I said, no. I said, I, I, you know, he's not going to come back. I told him no. Mm -hmm. They said, believe me, he's going to come back. Mm -hmm. uh, because I had actually walked into the middle of an investigation. I wasn't the first person oh. he had done this to. Okay. They had a whole trail of people. All right. Um, sure enough, I called him back and said, you know, my wife's got expensive tastes. I'll take you up on your offer. Met him back in my office. Mm. Bought me five thousand dollars cash. Um, I mean, not even any disguised uh, bribe. Like five thousand. I mean, actually, they counted it. It was five thousand dollars. <laughs> um, and and once it was it was amazing. Once I, it, it just blossomed. Mm -hmm. This gentleman uh, and and his father were a weekly appearance in my office each time with something else. Mm -hmm. Get us this stone change. Get us this. One meeting, um, they came in, and uh, every time they, they wanted to meet with me, I had to call the mm -hmm. DA's office, and they yeah. would hook me up. Uh, one meeting, they came in, and they ran off like three, four things. You know, could I do for them? When I left the meeting, uh, the guy from the FBI says, do you realize there was a total offer of over $110,000? Um, and... and uh, you know, it, it went on for a while. Yeah. Um, then, uh, you know, they finally arrested them mm -hmm. one day, and once they arrested them, they rattled off everybody else. The Rockland County Democratic Chairman went down. Mm. A county, a town attorney up in Havistro mm -hmm. went down. Because I guess what was happening though is that when the initial five thousand was a feeler, and then it, and and it wasn't even maybe that that clean and tight a deal because they were just feeling you out to see if yeah. you'd be one of the people. And then there would be a train of other money for other situations and, and your continuing loyalty. Yeah, uh, it, was, it was, they used the term, we want to develop a relationship. That was the term that they, they used several times. Yeah. And it, it was... Uh -huh. it's amazing. I mean, and it's often um, 
uh, amazing to people that it would be that blunt. You know, and, 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 but, but I was but, shocked. But it, but it was a local mm -hmm. level thing. In, in the big leagues, I understand the way they do it. They don't say offer you a hundred thousand um, flat out the sack of cash. They just offer you a hundred thousand dollar job in which you do nothing and in the job. Mm -hmm. But you got you still got the money. But it, there's a legal aura to it, and therefore nobody knows the wiser. Uh, but um, yeah, but but it pays to have a wire. In my own case, in the, in the campaign, I was approached in a very, very vague way about talking up the Republican candidate and being actually a stalking horse for FASO, uh, for governor, and instead of, uh, you know, just 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 actually concentrating on my own candidacy. Uh, and it w no no money figure was talked about. It was just said that future benefits might to you in terms of your relationship with, with the party. The, his party might come up out of this, mm -hmm. uh, and I, you know, rejected the invitation, and I didn't wasn't sure whether it was or wasn't uh, any kind of solicitation, because again, no monetary or or hard favor was actually put on the table. It's just a vague, you know, feeler kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how prevalent that is, uh, you know, in big party politics at the state level, but. I didn't have a wire on yeah. me too, and I didn't take it to the next yeah, no, this step. Was, you know. This was shocking. I, I, I was mm -hmm. being on a plane for all those years. People would always say, "Oh, this bribe's going on. This bribe's going on. This bribe's going on." You guys are on a take, you know. You got, and I would say, "No, nah, come on, that stuff doesn't go on." Mm -hmm. And the day it happened, I <laughs> could have knocked me over with a feather. My local chair of, of the Queens Libertarian Organization, he mentioned at the time uh, a certain administration was getting started a few uh, a, a decade ago. Um, and new people were coming in for, for job offers. They were submitting resume packages with, you know, gold rings and and, oh. and other uh, trinkets, jewelry, and uh, uh, other things like that to, to indicate their their sincerity in wanting the job. And I was saying, good grief! <laughs> uh, I thought grafted greed and bribes and all that was stuff of the 19th century and you know no, no, Tammany Hall and all that, but still going on. Um, but I think you, you, you did the party, our party, very good by being a representative of, of, of what a public official should be standing for, you know, integrity uh, and uh, with a clear, keen idea of what is proper and what isn't, especially when it comes to, you know, managing people's money, property, and, and lives. And um, Mr. Hevesy set a, a questionable example. Uh, but the way real-world politics goes, um, that's what gets you elected, <laughs> or, or people disregard it. I mean, there was supposed to have been a big investigation leading to some kind of activity against um, Mr. either an impeachment proceeding, if that were possible for his position. Uh, but now, since the election's over, he got sixty percent of the vote. That's the most amazing part. Yeah, all of that has sort of like sort of floated away, drifted away for the moment. I, I don't know if it's ever going to. You know, be followed up on it with any real concrete action, uh, and and whether the new you know uh, uh, state legislature and the new governor is going to pursue it at all is a mystery, you know, uh, or is it? <laughs> Maybe it's more like they're friends, so it, it'll be quietly laid to rest. Um, but I I hope that you can uh, be um, a continuing voice for the party and. What are your, your future plans right now in terms of like, are you, uh, would you have ambitions to run for governor yourself someday? Uh, I, would, I would hope, I, th I, think we, I think the important thing for the Libertarian Party now is mm -hmm. to, to get those, that 50,000 votes. Yep. And as you know, as hard as you worked, uh, you doubled the vote total of the last Libertarian candidate, but we're still a long way away. And as I mentioned to uh, one of the, at least one of the uh, newspapers interviewing me, what we need in the Libertarian Party is a Grandpa Munster, <laughs> uh, which you know the Green Party had, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, eight years ago when when uh, Al Lewis, you yeah. know, from from the Munsters ran for governor, and people voted for him because he was Grandpa Munster. Right. And um, they also had a keen sense of timing. They they knew that year in election year, it was one of those years where Halloween was Sunday and election day was Tuesday, so <laughs> they picked a horror. TV show, you know, kind of celebrity to tie Halloween to the election when they were at their closest conjunction, yeah. uh, and it worked like a charm, you know, and, and got yeah. them the fifty thousand they needed at least that election cycle. I mean, we need we need someone with a big name, or someone with a lot of money. Uh, you know, Ed Clark did so well back in what mm -hmm. was it, nineteen eighty, yeah. because his running mate was a billionaire. 
uh -huh. uh, and he, he had a lot of money. Um, if we had a lot of money, you would have had 50,000 votes. Right. Um, you know, or if, um, you know, in, in your case, if you had two candidates mm -hmm. who were obnoxious. I mean, whether you like uh, Faso or you mm -hmm. like Spitzer, we're going to assume they're both honest men and mm -hmm. they didn't turn people off. In yeah. my case, I got a, a good hunk of votes simply because mm -hmm. I think they were protest votes because they were protesting Hevesy yeah. and they, they were protesting Callahan at the same time, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I got some of the feedback. Um, so we're going to need something. We're going to need a... Right. I've suggested, you know, many um, strategies, and one of which is to get a person who is maybe a disgruntled celebrity. Uh, I think a few months ago, Art Garfunkel was arrested uh, for marijuana charge uh, while driving, and he went to Woodstock, I think, for his uh, court proceeding. Uh, maybe he's or people like him are still disgruntled and have run into with the law that they think are unjustified and we could possibly offer them a, a forum in a candidacy to voice their uh, objections to um, oppressive police state activity against peaceful activity like smoking a joint. Uh, same for other miscellaneous celebrities in New York who, who feel slighted. Uh, that, that might be a way to motivate them to be involved with us um, beyond, you know, just simply resting on their fame and whatever fortune they've uh, uh, derived. But if we don't get such a person, um, think you might run uh, again? Yeah, I, I, I think I would do it again. I don't know if a governor, maybe lieutenant governor, if you got a hard golf uncle to run. <laughs> um, you know. Yeah, that would be a safe, wonderful <laughs> position to be in. You're still running statewide on the major ticket, but you're the, the second fiddle to the, the big guy. Um, any uh, final thoughts about things? Uh, we got about 30 seconds here. No, no, I just, I just would encourage people, especially libertarians, to stay active, um, uh, you know, get involved in, in, in mainstream politics to the extent that you show people that, you know, we're, we're not a bunch of wackos. All right, so. that's, well, I hope uh, wacko is not the best word to end the program, but yeah. that's all the time we got. <laughs> I'd like to thank um, John Kane for appearing, and I'd like to thank you for watching, and hope you join us for another exciting episode of Hard Fire.